Today is the 1st of March. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. And if you're joining us for the very first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. Having explained it all, however, let's get going with today's episode of Walking the Way with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? In the name of Jesus, we pray, O Lord. Our own individual names separate us from one another, and more importantly, they separate us from you. But when we gather with your Holy Spirit as our guide, many prayers become one prayer. A jumble of many words become less a Tower of Babel and more a simple united song of praise. Thank you for this oneness that we've found in Jesus Christ, God of every nation, Master of the universe. And so in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music for today, just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in our Bible readings today, we read about the golden calves, and we continue our journey through the book of Hebrews. Let's ask God to speak to us as we open up our Bibles today. Father, as we open up our Bibles, we also open up our hearts. And we ask that these words of truth fall upon the very fabric of our lives. We pray that these ancient scriptures would come alive within us, to inspire, to heal, to restore, and to guide. 
Lord, come weave your words of life in us. Amen. And for the final time this week, our Bible readings are taken from the contemporary English version. And we're beginning with Acts 32 and 33. After the people saw that Moses had been on the mountain for a long time, they went to Aaron and said, Make us an image of a God who will lead and protect us. Moses brought us out of Egypt, but no one knows what happened to him. Aaron told them, Bring me the gold earrings from your wives and sons and daughters. And so everyone took off the earrings and brought them to Aaron. Then he melted them and made an idol in the shape of a young bull. All the people said to one another, This is the God who brought us out of Egypt. When Aaron saw what was happening, he built an altar in front of the idol and said, Tomorrow we will celebrate in honor of the Lord. The people got up early the next morning and killed some animals to be used for sacrifices and others to be eaten. Then everyone ate and drank so much that they began to carry on like wild people. The Lord said to Moses, Hurry back down. Those people you led out of Egypt are acting like fools. They have already stopped obeying me and have made themselves an idol in the shape of a young bull. They have bowed down to it, offered sacrifices, and said that it is the God who brought them out of Egypt. Moses, I have seen how stubborn these people are, and I am angry enough to destroy them. So don't try to stop me, but I will make your descendants into a great nation. Moses tried to get the Lord God to change his mind. Our Lord, you used your mighty powers to bring these people out of Egypt. Now don't become angry and destroy them. If you do, the Egyptians will say that you brought your people out here into the mountains just to get rid of them. Please, don't be angry with your people. Don't destroy them. Remember the solemn promise you made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You promised that some day they would have as many descendants as there are stars in the skies, and that you would give them land. So even though the Lord had threatened to destroy the people, he changed his mind and let them live. Moses went down the mountain with the two flat stones on which God had written all of his laws with his own hand, and he had used both sides of the stones. When Joshua heard the noisy shouts of the people, he said to Moses, A battle must be going on down in the camp. But Moses replied, It doesn't sound like they are shouting because they have won or lost a battle. They are singing wildly. When Moses got closer to the camp, he saw the idol, and he also saw the people dan dancing round. This made him so angry that he threw down the stones and broke them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. He melted the idol the people had made and ground it into a powder. He scattered it in their water and made them drink it. Moses asked Aaron, What did these people do to harm you? Why did you make them sin in such a way? Aaron answered, Don't be angry. You know as well as I do they're determined to do evil. They even told me that man Moses led us out of Egypt and now we don't know what happened to him. Make us a god to lead us. Then I asked them to bring me their gold earrings. They took them off and gave them to me. I threw the gold into the fire, and out came this bull. Moses knew that the people were out of control, and that it was Aaron's fault. And now they'd made fools of themselves in front of their enemies. So Moses stood at the gate of the camp and shouted, Everyone who is on the Lord's side, come over here. Then the men of the Levi tribe gathered round Moses, and he said to them, the Lord God of Israel commands you to strap on your swords and go through the camp, killing your relatives, your friends, and your neighbors. The men of the Levite tribe followed his orders, and that day they killed three thousand men. Moses said to them, You obeyed the Lord and did what was right, and so you will serve as his priests for the people of Israel. It was hard for you to kill your own sons and brothers, but the Lord has blessed you and made you his priests today. The next day Moses told the people, this is a terrible thing you have done. But I will go back to the Lord to see if I can do something to keep the sin from being held against you. Moses returned to the Lord and said, The people have committed a terrible sin. They have made a gold idol to be their God. But I beg you to forgive them. If you don't, please wipe my name out of your book. The Lord replied, I will wipe out of my book the name of anyone who has sinned against me. Now take my people to the place I told you about, and my angel will lead you. But when the time comes, I will punish them for this sin. So the Lord punished the people of Israel with a terrible disease, but for talking Aaron into making a gold idol. The Lord said to Moses, You led the people of Israel out of Egypt, 
Now get ready to lead them to the land I promised their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land rich with milk and honey, and I will send an angel to force out the people who live there, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. And I will go with my people, but they are so rebellious that I would destroy them before they even got there. Even before the Lord had said these harsh things, he told Moses, These people are really rebellious, and I will kill them at once if I went with them. But tell them to take off their fancy jewelry, and then I'll tell them what to do with them. So the people started mourning, and after leaving Mount Sinai, they stopped wearing fancy jewelry. Moses used to set up a tent far from camp. He called it the meeting tent, and whoever needed some message from the Lord would go there. Each time Moses went out to the tent, everybody would stand at the entrance of their own tents and watch him enter. And then they would bow down because a thick cloud would come down in front of the tent, and the Lord would speak to Moses face to face just like a friend. Afterwards, Moses would return to camp, but his young assistant Joshua would stay at the tent. Moses said to the Lord, I know that you have told me to lead these people to the land you promised them, but you have not told me who my assistant will be. You have said that you will be my friend, and that you are pleased with me. If this is true, then let me know what your plans are, then I can obey and continue to please you. And don't forget that you have chosen this nation to be your own. The Lord said, I will go with you and give you peace. Then Moses replied, If you aren't going with us, please don't make us leave this place. But if you go with us, everyone will know that you are pleased with your people and with me. That way we will be different from the rest of the peoples on the earth. So the Lord told him, I will do what you have asked, because I am your friend, and I am pleased with you. Then Moses said, I pray that you will let me see you in all your glory. The Lord answered, All right, I am the Lord, and I show mercy and kindness to anyone I choose. I will let you see my glory and hear my holy name. But I won't let you see my face because anyone who sees my face will die. There is a rock not far from me. Stand beside it. And before I pass by in all my shining glory, I will put you in a large crack in the rock. I will cover your eyes with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you will see my back. But you will not see my face. Hebrews 8 What I mean is that we have a high priest who sits at the right-hand side of God's great throne in heaven. He also serves as the priest in the most holy place inside the real tent there in heaven. This tent of worship was set up by the Lord, not by humans. Since all priests must offer gifts and sacrifices, Christ also needed to have something to offer. If he were here on earth, he would not be a priest at all, because here the Lord appoints other priests to offer sacrifices. But the tent where they serve is just a copy and a shadow of the real one in heaven. Before Moses made the tent, he was told, Be sure to make it exactly like the pattern you were shown on the mountain. Now Christ has been appointed to serve as a priest in a much better way, and he has given us much assurance of a better agreement. If the first agreement with God had been all right, there would not have been any need for anyone. But the Lord found fault with it and said, I tell you the time will come when I will make a new agreement with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. It won't be like the agreement that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. They broke their agreement with me and I stopped caring about them. But now I tell the people of Israel, this is my new agreement. The time will come when I, the Lord, will write my laws on their minds and hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Not one of them will have to teach another to know me, their Lord. All of them will know me, no matter who they are. I will treat them with kindness, even though they are wicked. I will forget their sins. When the Lord talks about a new agreement, he means that the first one is out of date, and anything that is old and useless will soon disappear. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that may have caught our attention. And after music, we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
before we offer up our prayers for today. Just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then please drop us a line through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email. All the contact details will be in the show notes. But let's pray, shall we? Lord, today I'm aware of the troubles and darkness in our world. Please come and lead me in prayers for my community, my nation, and my world. You are the light that shines in the bleakest times. Let your kingdom be built on earth. May those who suffer be comforted. May those who are at war search for peace. And may those who are in pain find healing. Amen. Now prayer for the time of the year. Dear God, I lift my wonderful friends to you and give thanks for their friendship. Please watch over them and guide their paths. Pour out your spirit upon them that they may receive fresh hope in their lives. Brush away their concerns, disappointments and hurts. And come open their eyes anew to your promises. Stir up their faith to take risks again. May they be fully engaged with each moment. Lord, please come and bless my dear friends' lives, plans and dreams. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way, the podcast based on the book this day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer, by Lawrence Hoss Dukey, published by Abingdon Press. All of the details for today's show can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for any and all prayers. If you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And if you want any more information about the podcast or me, please head to rayborrow.co.uk and you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget, you can also listen to Walking the Way on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray. And so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue Walking the Way.